Welcome to another episode of the Emetophobia Free Podcast. And today we are joined by the lovely Bloss. Hello, Hello. Bloss. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Very well. Good. How are you, Michelle? I'm great, thank you. I'm very well today. <laughs> so Bloss reached out to us on social media um, in January uh, after she'd seen a post and said, I'd love to help with sharing the message about Emetophobia Free and Thrive um, because I'm Emetophobia Free now and it's changed my life and I want to tell my story and here she is. So I'm yeah. very excited <laughs> to hear about Bloss's story. Now, Bloss, from the information that I do have, she went through it in 2018 uh, with a coach and has lots to talk about. So over to you, Bloss. Do you want to talk about your life as an emetophobe first so people can, yeah. you can put people in the picture? Yes, of course. So um, I had been an emetophobe for many, many years before Thrive. I didn't actually have a label on it probably yeah. until, so it would have started around age nine. And probably when I was about 21, I started Googling it a bit and thinking, hmm, okay, what is this? Because it's becoming something that's really controlling my life a lot. Yeah. Um, I'd never tried anything previously. I was just living constantly in my head, very fearful of everything. Um, I had tons of safety seeking behaviors, tons of obsessive thoughts, which was probably for me the worst part of having a metaphobia mm -hmm. because it was a constant, what if this happens? What if that happens? And it was always linked to being sick. Um, I kind of, I, I struggled to kind of put my finger on why I was like that, but because um, obviously through Thrive, you learn about how phobias uh, don't happen to you. But at that point, I felt like everyone had something they were scared of and mine just happened to be being sick. Some people yeah. don't like spiders. And for me, it was that. But mine seemed to interfere with my life a lot more than many people's. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Had you told anybody about your emetophobia at that point? You started around nine. Um, when I was nine, it was just a case of, oh, I'm scared of this. And I didn't really put too much thought into why or where or, you know, what it was. Yeah. But as I got older, I mean, my my mum, she probably didn't understand it particularly. And they tried to help me, of course, but they didn't really understand. They were like, nobody likes being sick, the kind of classic response, um, yes. which, you know, happens without Absolutely. understanding. Um, and, yeah, I, I just tried to live my day-to-day -day life knowing it was there, but, to be honest, terrified constantly of it because yes. I just didn't feel like I could cope with it at all. So it was a constant... Uh, I felt like threats were everywhere, especially yeah. in school and yeah, you know, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So when you were 21, then you started Googling it, you found Thrive. No, I didn't find Thrive straight away. Oh. Um, I just Googled it and then that's when you come up with all of the kind of websites to do with it and everyone kind of colluding <laughs> so right it was like oh okay yes I have this 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 like I am one okay. of these people sadly yes, um, yes. but then it, it got a little bit worse. I started to get a few um, other symptoms. So you could tell it was kind of progressing. Only yes. looking back, I know that. Because yeah. I started to feel sick and kind of go to the toilet a lot. And I just felt like, okay, this is getting worse, not better now. And yes. I'm actually more scared of my phobia than I yes. am of sickness. <laughs> like, yes. how bad is this going to get? Am I going to have panic yes. attacks? Blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. So at that before point, you before you dive in any further, oh, that's yes, worth that's, that's okay. That's worth digging into a little bit and just yes. making the point that the the websites and the online forums they're set up with completely good intentions and for people to mm. feel understood and uh, listened to and so that they can get reassurance from other people. But the majority of the time, they're very unhelpful because, like you said, they're very collusive. So what you're doing mm -hmm. by being a part of that forum or that group is that you are surrounding yourself with people who feel the same as you as powerless as you who have different safety seeking behaviors to you so you're kind of piling on and making yours worse because you're getting that feedback that it's terrifying and that you've got to avoid it and you're picking up safety seeking behaviors from other people so generally they're really unhelpful and if you are listening to this and trying to overcome emetophobia my advice would be to come out remove yourself from mm. that because you actually want to be surrounding yourself with people who think that being sick is not nice but not terrifying it's uncomfortable it's unpleasant I don't like it but it's one of those things in life it's like getting the flu and these are the kind of people that you want to be surrounding yourself with because that's the belief that you want to have about it 
Absolutely. Fabulous. Thank you. Just wanted to dive in there. So no, online forums, time. getting worse, feeling sick, going to the toilet a lot. That's where we were up to. <laughs> yeah, just wait. So I, I had a list on my phone um, from the yes. Thrive book. Let me see if I can get it a second. Because this morning great. I did a bit of reminiscing. <laughs> yes, great. Yeah. All the things I would avoid. So examples, avoid touching door handles or um, stay away from people who are sick. Go to the toilet if my stomach feels even a little bit odd. Make sure I have good access to a toilet at work. I mean, that yes. sounds mad to me now, but I needed to know if I was sick yeah. that I could go to it. Um, put my fingers in my ears if someone's sick. Mm. Won't use certain antibiotics. Wouldn't go on roller coasters. Wouldn't eat too much. So, you know, the, the list goes on, but it's so much avoidance. It was so, yes. so much. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Lovely. That's really useful because it's really, when you're suffering yourself, Mm -hmm. It's really good to hear people talking about their safety seeking and avoidance. So you can just go, I get it. I really get it. That's me. I understand. Yeah. And then you can see somebody going, I don't have this anymore. And I know part of your story. A lot of those things you've just dealt with right recently, haven't you? Which is really exciting yeah. to share. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited about that. Um, I was looking up cures for phobias in general, not knowing that emetophobia was slightly different. Okay. So I saw something, it was called something like Phobia to Freedom. And it was this really nice guy and he said he could hypnotise me. And I was like, yeah. perfect, right. So... <laughs> It's like, that's what, exactly what I need. I remember saying to John, um, don't worry if I'm really upset during this hypnotherapy because it's probably going to do something to me and then the phobia is going to be gone, you know. Totally believed this was going to work. Um, yeah. Did it. I was told to kind of imagine I'm floating above it and, you know, all of this stuff. It might work for some people, but it just, it wasn't doing anything for me. And I remember coming off of it and saying, okay, I paid quite a lot of money for that. And I literally feel the same. And the guy who did it, he tried really hard. He tried to do some more with me free of charge. And I just was like, it's just, it's not, not working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, feel absolutely. any different. Um, yeah. So then I Googled some more and found Thrive Programme. Brilliant. Okay. Fab. <laughs> so what was your experience then of the programme? Um, straight away, I loved it. Um, I think just because it's science backed, that really helped me because I'd read a lot of books like The Power of Now and things like that, which were good. They did help a bit because they involved positive thinking and stuff like that. But none of them really explained how things were happening and why things were happening. It felt like I had tiny bits of the puzzle from different places, but none of them actually brought them together. Brought together. And that's what Thrive did. Brilliant. Yeah. Lovely. So did you go through it yourself first with the programme and then get a coach or was it straight away with a coach? Um, to be honest, I was quite desperate at that moment. I remember saying, oh, I really need the money for a coach. So yeah. I I did do the coach, but I can see now looking back that I could have just done it with the programme. It was just at that point I felt like I wanted that additional support. Fine. Absolutely fine. Okay. So mm -hmm. when you'd gone through it with the coach, mm -hmm. I wanted to relate rate it back to the hypnotherapy thing. I'm going to do this thing and then it's going to be, poof, be gone. Was that what happened? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was, um, but the, the difference on. definitely is that you feel like you understand how the program's going to work. Whereas with yes. the hypnotherapy, it just doesn't make yeah. much sense to me. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I felt absolutely. like this is the right thing to be doing, but yeah. no, it doesn't take away my emetophobia instantly. Um, yes. It's... I think Rob explains it well in, in the book again, like with the puzzle pieces, you need yes. a lot of different elements to come together yes. for the phobia yes. to disappear. It doesn't yes. just, you don't just wake up and it's gone, <laughs> but yes. you start to slowly feel better. That's it. And yeah. that's, that was my experience of it. So within a few weeks, I definitely saw improvements in myself, but it was a long journey for me to get to where I am now. <laughs> yes. So tell us about that journey because that's a really encouraging thing for people to hear, particularly if they've been through the program. Some people have been through the program a couple of times and they're thinking, I'm just mm. not quite there yet. But they will get there if they keep Absolutely. doing it and keep applying and keep practicing because Thrive is a doing thing and it's something you've got yes. to practice and apply. So tell us I was about very... your journey. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, for me, I put more effort than I did at anything at school into doing this. <laughs> um, yes, I read the yes. book the first time. I did all the exercises with the coach um, who was very helpful. And then after my coach experience, it was just a case of me. I've probably reread the book three or four to five times over yep. time. Yes. Um, so bearing in mind, I'm six years on now. So across that time, it was probably a couple of years ago that I stopped having to reread the book because it was just yes. in my head. Um, yes. 
Yes. I made a lot of notes. I made a lot of reminders. So like every hour I would have a reminder coming up. What are you doing? Where are your thoughts? And it had to be like that to get me to do it because my head was all over the place before. So I was being able to make difference in one part of my head or my beliefs and then something else was still not quite there. So it was a case of bringing it all together over a long period of time. And I think the last part was my obsessive thinking that's that's been the hardest part for me to deal with because I just have a tendency to be quite obsessive sometimes um and so I would even obsess about the program a bit right yes yeah (laughs) absolutely 100% great okay I'd have post dessert I'd have everything (laughs) amazing and that's good it's really good to hear um because it does take effort because you're breaking habits if you've always thought obsessively I think I've said this on a previous podcast I really struggled with obsessive thinking as well because I'd never thought in a different way. And when I read about it, I thought, does does everybody else not? Is there a different way of thinking? Does everybody everybody else not think like this? Because I hadn't realized there was a different way of thinking. So it does take time and it does take that Mm -hmm. constant reminder and that constant, I have the, the, the goal in your mind and you have have to have the attitude and the belief that almost come hell or high water, I am getting over this thing. And that will keep you motivated and keep you going forward and keep challenging those thoughts and keep rereading the program and keep going until you get there. And some people take longer than others. I mean, there's a whole podcast on why some people take longer than others, but it's amazing to have you here with us today going, you know what? Yeah, it might have taken me a few years, (laughs) but I'm here, right? Brilliant. Okay. So worth it in the end. And I mean, the podcast and the videos that Rob's done have been very helpful. Those are the kind of things I would listen to on the go. I was just constantly immersing myself in Thrive as much as I could to just try and make the improvements, even if I wasn't quite where I wanted to be yet. Yes, (laughs) brilliant. So you are where you want to be now. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and that's a phobia free. I love it. Yes. So do you want to, to share? Because Bloss, I do know, has just got married recently. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. And went on honeymoon to Disneyland. Yep, Disney World in Florida. Disney World. It was fabulous. Really good. <laughs> Great. So this is all in the past couple of months, isn't it? Yeah, so literally a few weeks ago is when I got back. <laughs> fabulous. So do you want to tell, because I know that... Um, you were then faced with a sickness scenario on your honeymoon. So do you want to talk us through where you're at now? Two, two sickness scenarios. Talk (laughs) us through. How did you respond? What was going on for you? Um, So I haven't, since doing the programme, I haven't been sick, which we can talk about in a bit if you'd like to. But for me, I hadn't been faced with lots of sickness related scenarios, just odd ones, you know, people around me, but nobody close to me. And that is normally the most of the test you know when when you've got somebody right there who's being yeah. sick um yes. so unfortunately for my husband <laughs> he woke up on the morning after the wedding and he you know probably just had a few drinks and things we don't know the exact reason he doesn't yeah. get sick much he hadn't been sick in years and um he was so <laughs> For me, I was in quite an enclosed space with him yeah. because we were in yeah. like a cabin in the woods style scenario mm. and um, we didn't have lots of supplies or anything with us. And well, in the past, that would have been a real issue for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I would just had to have got out of that scenario quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to tolerate it in the way I can now. Yeah, And so I was quite calm about it. I wasn't enjoying it. So I won't lie and say, you know, it was a calm experience. I was just using my Thrive techniques um, to maintain a positive inner voice and just deal with it moment by moment. Because we had a plane to catch that morning, but there was no point in me worrying about all of the different things that could happen. (laughs) I was just like, okay, I'm going to be nice about it, help John, but also um, just be realistic, see what's going to happen and we'll get through it. And it was just totally different to how I'd been in the past. Lovely. You know when you say, "I, I didn't enjoy it, Nobody would. No, I know. Nobody, no. nobody would go, oh, goody, I've woken up after, you know, morning after my wedding, happy honeymoon to me and my husband being sick. Yeah, no one's going to enjoy that. But being yeah. able to tolerate it and cope with it and yeah. stay calm, brilliant. Just, Fabulous. Yeah. I was just such a fight or flight situation for me before. I would just, yeah. you know, put my fingers in my ears, just couldn't go anywhere near him. It was just, you know, it was just yes. different. Yeah. And, Absolutely. um, 
it showed me how much I changed because I was still using the bathroom, which again, I wouldn't have done before yeah. and shared a toothbrush because I had to, you know, all these things yes. I just, I wouldn't have done previously. So no, it just absolutely. showed me. <laughs> yeah. So you shared a, shared a toothbrush with him after he'd been sick. Yes. Yeah, so I know that sounds a bit odd, but because we had so many different, like we didn't have many supplies, he, yeah. we, did, we everything was packed away. And I was like, okay, I can brush my teeth or leave it. And I'm like, Do you know what? He's washed it. It'll be fine. And I just, you know, I wasn't totally comfortable, but I still did it. And I didn't make a big deal of it. And again, that would not have happened. I'd have just not brushed my teeth. <laughs> no. If there's a if there's a definition of a metaphobia free bloss, I think that's it. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. So did you did you make the plane? Yeah, we did make the plane. Um, we had Good. to stop off once on the way and then John was over it and he was happy again and it, and it didn't dominate my day. That would have really dominated my start of my honeymoon before. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just processed that event in a really positive way. It's on my positives list now. Brilliant. Um, and, yeah, we got on with the honeymoon. Do you want me to lead into the next yes, <laughs> <this> scenario? absolutely. <laughs> yes, keep going. Um, so a week later to the day, which we found quite spooky, but obviously for no reason <laughs> other than coincidence, Um <laughs> John woke up in the night and yeah. he just felt really poorly again. And he didn't know why. He obviously apologised to me. He's like, oh, sorry, boss. I just don't know why this is happening. And I'm like, yeah. it's okay. Like, you, I yeah. feel unwell. Um, he said, I'm going to be sick again. I was like, okay. This time I was more connected to it because the, the toilet was kind of separate in the cabin. So I couldn't hear it or anything. Whereas yeah. in this scenario, very much audible. And yeah. previously... I'd have had to have left the room, fingers in my mm. ears, that mm. stuff. I just couldn't really hear it. But I wasn't totally comfortable, but I stayed calm and I went on my phone. I sat in bed and I just kind of, you know, the event played out. Didn't sound great. Didn't, you know, felt sorry for John. But yeah. um, I didn't overreact like before at all. Um, again, we he didn't have really supplies and things to sort the bathroom out as in the past I'd have wanted him to. And um, I didn't stay away from him in bed. Like I'd share a bed still after that wouldn't have happened. There was just so many things. And then I kind of found out it was probably a bug. And again, that would have been massive alarms before. Yes. (laughs) So I was like, Oh no, like I've been sharing water bottles with you for, um, we've been kissing like normal and all these things. And you're like, Oh, I could have got it. I'm in a theme park, which is full of norovirus and germs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I challenged all of that and I didn't let it dominate the holiday. Um, I just, I worked on a few things. I I challenged what I needed to, but we got through it. And that's another sign to me that if I could still enjoy my honeymoon that much and deal with sickness twice, (laughs) <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's a good point to make. Because so when you, you were having some emetophobic thoughts there, because you went, oh, not yeah. a virus, theme park, full of, Especially right? when I found out it was a bug. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's an interesting point to make, because what yeah. you were able to do is go emetophobic thoughts. Clearly, I've got a belief there that's still somewhere around about norovirus that isn't particularly helpful. But actually, I was able to challenge them and I knew what to yes. do. I didn't go down that rabbit hole. I didn't think, oh, no. crikey, I'm panic and I'm stop eating. And no, that's done a in good the point. Past. Yeah, yeah, right. So you carried on eating, carried on drinking, yes. carried on sharing the bed with him. Yeah. So you may be in a metaphobia free. You might have some emetophobic thoughts from time to time, yeah. but it's how you deal with them. And you go, well, I know now how to deal with them, how to respond. I can move past them and I don't need to. I call it going down the rabbit hole. I don't need to go yeah. down that rabbit hole. I don't need to obsess. No. I don't need to catastrophize because I can cope. Fabulous. Brilliant. And that's it. Like I had probably half an hour where I felt anxious and I said, yeah. I'm not feeling great about this, but I'm I'm okay. And I still ate my yeah. lunch and I got through it. And I said, he's like, oh, I'll, I'll look after you if it happens. And I'm like, I can, I can cope if it happens. Like he's like, oh, you don't get sick much. And I'm like, I know I don't get sick much, but if yeah. I do get sick, it'll be fine. I'll be fine, <laughs> yeah. So I was doing Good. that just to make sure he was leading <laughs> me down the right path. And then- yes. um, I went to the pool. I just enjoyed my afternoon. I still had a subway for dinner. Like I didn't, Lovely. even when I had the thoughts, I was challenging them when they came up. So it just Lovely. was fine. Fabulous. It could have happened, Lovely. but it didn't. <laughs> Lovely. Absolutely brilliant. And I think that's it. Again, another point to hammer home is that when you do create a bit of anxiety, which you did, you did, you had a half an hour mm-hmm. of anxiety there, mm-hmm. that 
people have if, if you have to put energy into coping with something that's not just exclusive to being sick with emetophobe there will be other areas like most people do have areas where they have to put effort in to cope with it because they feel a bit anxious maybe it's public speaking but it's not a phobia it's no, a different that's a good thing. thing it's a yeah. dislike of it i don't particularly enjoy this i find it uncomfortable and i can put energy into managing i know i can get through that's different to a phobia a phobia is that obsessive rule in your life, making decisions based on it, constantly thinking about it. What you're describing yes. is a is a dislike of being sick. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> you know, if I was going to go up a, a, a high wires thing, I would probably feel a bit anxious before I went up there yes. because I've got a bit of an unhelpful belief about heights that I could challenge. You know, if I wanted to, I would, you know, my legs would probably shake, but I've not got a phobia of heights. No, it's not right? a ride or die situation anymore. It's not a ride or die situation. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely it was great cool. <laughs> yes yes because that's a phobia yeah and that's brilliant yes. and that's really open and honest and uh, a genuine account of being a metaphobia free and not being a perfectionist because genuinely when people are perfectionists and they don't challenge that thinking style when they go through the program they might get to something like that create that bit of anxiety and then go straight into catastrophic perfectionism. Oh, well, I failed. I'm still emetophobic. I still found it really unhelpful, you know, uncomfortable. It's not the case. It's not the case at all. It's a little wins. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So carried on with your theme, but went around the pool. What happened with the rest of your honeymoon? It was great. So, you know, that was a little thing in the middle we had to deal with, mainly just on a, we need to look after job level, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but other than other than that, it, we had such a good time. And towards the end, I was really challenging myself throughout the week to go on a certain roller coaster. And Fabulous. one of my fears on my list was going on roller coasters. So before Thrive, I, yeah. I'd never done a roller coaster, but yet said I couldn't do them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that was the classic thing I'd do there. Um, and this one was massive. Loads of going upside down, very fast, the most extreme one in Universal Studios. And I just, I couldn't imagine myself doing it. So I really having to build myself up for it. I'd already yeah. turned it down once saying, you know what? No. But I really wanted to come on this podcast and say I'd done it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm wearing my t-shirt. Motivation. Today. <laughs> Fabulous. Look at that. <laughs> but I did do it. And I must say in the queue, I was very, very uh, nervous about it. But I got on it and I did it and I really enjoyed it. So that's Fabulous. another win for me. <laughs> yes. And you know what? That's a that's a beautiful example of Thrive as a doing thing. Yes. A beautiful yes. example. Because what you just said there was, I wanted to do it, but I couldn't imagine myself. So you'd, you'd got your no. unhelpful belief about it. You thought loads of unhelpful thoughts. Then you went, right, I'm going to apply all of these skills because Thrive is skills based. Yeah. I know how to get through something that I'm frightened of. I know what to do. And I'm going to apply it. And it's an it's an active, takes energy, takes effort, you know, because I'm guessing it wasn't a, a five minute thing. I'm guessing you had to build yourself up over a few days yeah. and imagine yourself getting up. Yeah. The night before Brilliant. I was watching videos and just trying to prepare myself as much as I could. The morning I was Perfect. like, okay, right, I'm going to do it today. But you're waiting in the queue. There's anticipatory anxiety there, but you just yes. have to manage it. So Yeah. And that's amazing. That's absolutely spot on. Because that that you know, you, you can apply to any area of life. That happened to be something emetophobia related, but let's say you were going for a, yeah. a job interview, oh, let's say, yeah. and you had to do a, a, a speech in front of people. You may have to do that, but it's a, a thriving skill set, a thriving side of you knows that whatever that situation is, your skills That's supersede horrible. it, really. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter what that, that scenario is because I can cope. Go on, go yeah. On. So for one thing that's not a metaphobia related that I've changed my belief about is um, right. spiders. So like I've always mm. disliked them, didn't have a phobia, but I wouldn't touch them. I wouldn't go near them. Yeah. You know, it was always like, oh, can you get that spider for me? And Perfect. I've become a lot more confident with those now. I've held them and I've, I've do the glass thing now, take them outside, which is just would not have happened in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so things like that that's as great. well. There's just so many different positives. Lovely. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So you're where you're at now, you're, you're a metaphobia free, loving life, feeling powerful. What does the future hold for you? Have you got any challenges that may come up in the future? I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. Um, <laughs> are you, uh, 
we were talking about having kids, weren't we, before? We were. <laughs> That's what we were alluded to. Yeah. <laughs> so that one's always been a bit tricky for me, um, yeah. mainly because of dealing with a child uh, if they were sick and just mm-hmm. do I have that kind of skill set? And do you know what? This, this honeymoon's probably shown me that if I do want to do that, uh, yeah. With the challenges I face there, I, I can do it. It might be tricky for sure, <laughs> but yeah. I wouldn't let that stop me do it. <laughs> Fabulous. Lovely. Great, great, great news. Earlier, Bloss, you said that you haven't been sick, but you know you're over it. And you might want to touch on that. So do you want to talk us through how you know you're over it, even though you've not been sick? Yeah. Um, so that's always been a question I've had, um, something that previously I was like, oh, I'm never going to actually be free of this until I'm sick. But I know that Rob makes the point a lot that some people haven't been sick who actually have a metaphobia. So it's never about that. But without getting into his version of it, I just yeah. feel more powerful now. So I've got so many examples of me coping with things that I'm uncomfortable with and that previously I'd have created panic or anxiety about that it's shown me that I just have the internal skills to be able to keep myself calm, even in a situation like that, which I wouldn't be comfortable in. And so just knowing that I've got that skill set and the internal sense of power and control now means that I don't have that fear that I won't be able to cope with it. I know I'll just get through it whenever it happens. If it's tomorrow, 10 years, never again, whenever. Um, It's it's just having those coping skills. Fab. So do you have any words of wisdom, any message that you want to give to anybody listening to this podcast? Uh, If you reflect back possibly on yourself when you had just found the, the, the Thrive Programme or you were still a metaphobic, what would you have wanted someone to say to you? Anything um, that you want to well, share? I think it's just about persevering. So even yeah. if it feels super tough and you're like, oh, I just yeah. don't think I'm like other people. Uh, you know, I used to say to myself, my emetophobia wasn't as bad as some people, so I couldn't ah. be cured. So there's always ah. going to be a reason why you feel like you can't be cured. But okay. it, it's the same for everyone. It's a mechanical yeah. process. You just have to keep yes. doing the right things. And it's definitely possible to overcome 100% as long as you Lovely. put the effort in. So yes. don't give up on it because it's not worth living with a metaphobia for life. Um, it's much better to just put in the effort now and make your life a bit better. My last thing would be to thank you very much for your time and for sharing your story and for encouraging and inspiring everybody who's out there who's still suffering with this thing. And to say to anybody who's in your position, who sat at home thinking, actually, it's changed my life. And I'd quite like to do a testimony and get on the podcast. We're here. Reach out. Let's do it. It's yeah. lovely. To, it's it's <laughs> amazing to hear from people, obviously, because I'd never met you. And no. it's lovely to to chat to you and see all your different stories, because the more voices we've got saying you don't have to live with this, because the, the sad fact of the matter is, you know, mm. the majority of psychologists and psychiatrists say you can't be cured of it. You've got to learn to manage it. And it's not true. And the more people that go, no, I've done it. No, I'm metaphobia free. I'm metaphobia free. I'm not. It's, I don't have it anymore. The better, the more powerful those people who are still suffering will feel. So thank you so much for your time and your reaching out. (laughs) No problem. Thank you so much, (laughs) Michelle. All right. (laughs)